Okay, okay, I'm recording. Recording now. Okay. Right. So we're gonna do we're gonna do something fun. First, we're going to look at why people are such idiots. Um, I was mentioning to you right before we went we we record we we were recording is that sometimes I post something that I know people are gonna have like some uh, there's gonna be a backlash to it. But sometimes I post something like so like just joke and think like it's so you know. So something like not that deep, right? Just something like, hey, hey, look at this. And then people get mad and like, like they, they constantly surprise me of how easily. Hold on, let me just sh share the screen. You saw this post, right? Yeah. The bear one? The bear one, yes. All right. This, right? Mm -hmm. it, do you see? Is it, do you see it? Is it sharing? Mm hmm. Okay, yeah. Black bear, brown bear, racist bear, right? I looked at this, I was like, haha, that's funny, let me share it, right? And then, like, okay, look at, let's look at some butthurt people. Uh, Ian was saying, what point is trying to be made here? White people are the real victims? Question mark, like, is that the point I'm trying to make? Serious incel content, the sort of thing I would expect from Breitbart. Okay. Like, really? Like, what? What does that say? Where? How do you get white people are the real victims out of this? Because he thinks that you're trying to make a point, I would expect. I mean, it, for me, it's just like a meme. It's just a funny meme, right? It's but I think meme. given that what you've been posting previously, uh, they think that you're basically trying to make arguments using memes. I mean, this is just funny. I mean, if they see... Okay, hold on. Let's see what the replies are. Do you know what incel means? Yeah, what does it got to do with incels? Yeah, he, he misused that. And okay, so he knows what it means, but it says, and this is exactly the sort of rubbish they post. Who has made the claim that all white people are racist exactly? Oh, wow, that guy has no idea. Right, yeah. There are so many people out there that actually make that claim. Yeah, this is like, I mean, we have seen, it's just, it's way too common. I have, he, he must be living under a rock. Actually, it's very interesting. If you actually scroll down, there's this guy who actually sees my points. Wait, hold on. Who's a? Oh, here. Like I like this guy a lot. He mm -hmm. he sees like he's a he BLM, he's a BLM supporter. See, he has like the Black Lives Matter like thing, right? And he doesn't see anything. Um, he, in, re, in my recent post. None of them he does sees that is against anything that he views. I, I want to have him on one of my shows or something, right? And he he had, he said like, look, some people unironically think this. So, I mean, if if even BLM supporters are noticing that, yeah, this is a real thing. That some people think all white people are racist, right? <laughs> Let me see another triggered person. Hmm. How is this? How is that funny? And what is what is it doing on this page? Look at this guy. What is it doing on this page? This is my personal account. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What do you like? Like people demanding what kind of <laughs> people are okay. Well, if it's not funny to you, well then it's not funny to you. Just move on. And what? What do you mean? What is it like? This guy is demanding what I post on my personal page. Is so amazing. People. I mean, even if the post was not funny, this comment made it funny. I hate those people, though, that say, like, oh, this isn't even funny. Like, you have any idea how subjective comedy is? Jesus Christ. Just because it's not funny to you does not mean that it is not funny in general. It's such a ridiculous thing to say. It's just people get offended because it's a meme that goes against what they believe. So, therefore, it is objectively not funny and no one else should be laughing at it. It's nonsense. Donna is saying, okay, here. When and more importantly, why did you become a rightist, rightist asshole? What has this got to do with being a right wing or left wing? I don't know. Here's another one. Chester. No, no, here. This guy, I don't know how it's weird. You have a, this guy has an X in his name. Uh, I can't read it. 
It's saying this is a really dark post. What you're trying to rile up here is really base, especially in a moment when we're watching unprecedented American. What is this word? The alliances. Oh, I think he. I think he just meant to put alliances with far right messages. What is this word? No, it's a word. Oh, it is a word. A casual romantic Alien. or sexual. What? Um, a brief casual involvement with something. Uh, I think it's the second mate. Why is he using this word? Like, you don't even know that word. So it's not just I'm English is my second language. But if you don't know that word, that means like people are just trying to be smart by using words that nobody else uses. Uh, American dalliances with far right messages. Weird flick to dismissively, haha. Any time to be honest, this is our insults content. What the another fuck does this? Thing. Yeah, another insult thing. Jesus Christ, man! These people look at it like a, a random joke, and they see like, oh my God, far right messages. <laughs> Why are you posting this at this time? Jeez, I think these people. Do they it's have? So, like, yeah, yeah, like people immediately associate anything. That it is like, like this is the the whole like association problem that we're dealing with, right? Where people will just call you off as right wing or right winger if you disagree with a position that apparently the left has. Mm. And I've seen it so so often that it's really scary. It's like it's not even just like slightly right of center. You're you're that means you're far right. It's literally like, yeah, you're still on the left, but you disagree with one position on the left. Therefore, it is a right wing position. It can, it can still be like, it's, right. it's weird. Wait, I actually have a com. Uh, I actually have um, a response ready for this. Hold on. I saved this somewhere. Somebody told me to use this. Where is it? Here. I can make, I can change it. Somebody sent me this. Uh, 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 I think there was a, a black person sent me this as a gift to use. And I'm going to use it here. Hold on. There we go. Is this guy white? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's white. Zofer Pride? I don't know what the fuck what the fuck kind of name is that? But it doesn't matter. Here. I'm not going to reshape and reformulate my opinion in a way that is digestible to you as a white person. Damn. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. It's not at all what it no should I add to it is this enough nope wrong but I'm not no should I just leave it like this what do you think I think it's good. better if you just leave it like that it's good it's nice it's good. okay good hmm Good. This is people should like keep using this. This is kind of like a Christian woman coming at you and telling you uh, like you're wrong, and you just use the Bible verse at them that tells them that women should be quiet and not speak. This is like this is the card that we could use against all the woke people. I mean, it, it, do you think this is the best way to go about it? Like, do you think actually trying to engage in With a this guy? I mean, yeah. Do you, do you think it'd be possible instead of just sending memes? Yeah, it is. But, I mean, it's exhausting to constantly try, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it is, yeah. I tr I guess I'd rather leave it, and, and like, there's, like, there's limited capacity that each one of us has to constantly try um, changing people's opinions, right? 
So you might as well, given that the given that you don't have unlimited emotional and uh, capacity, and also the time and the care, for, you know, you know that everybody has unlimited care. Uh, I think it's it's it makes sense to me to reserve your resources, you know, those resources to be spent on people that have a higher, you know, chance. Mm -hmm. I honestly think like woke people seem to be less less of a you get a little less of a return on your investment to change their opinion than a whole bunch of you know white supremacists like i have had more luck convincing white supremacists why they're wrong than a bunch of these woke dogma people actually they're like the white supremacist kind of people some of them are so easy to change their minds right if you give them a chance some of them are so easy some of them are so easy to change their mind like when, once i like spend some time with them it, it shows to me that how nobody has ever even tried you know what i mean like i just needed to show like tell them a few couple of things and they were like oh yeah yeah maybe and like what the fuck like did nobody even give you this this much time to tell you these things like how the hell like, did you manage to go, you know, it because it, the knee-jerk reaction to them is like, oh, my God, disgusting, vile, right? So I think, like, they're kind of like a lot of them, not not all of them, okay, but a lot of them are kind of like a low-hanging fruit when it comes to going out, going to them and telling them why they're absolutely wrong about everything. I haven't had any experiences with genuine white supremacists, unless you consider people like Ben Shapiro one or something. Oh, but, Jesus. Yeah. But by the way, look at this. Um, uh, I want to post this. Do you think? That... <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna post this right now. What do you think? What kind of reaction we'll get? Um, let's let's predict together. Wait, is this too much? It's not too much, is it? Uh, do Do you think this is wise though, fanning the flames? Because you mentioned. It, it's, you know, we all have limited resources in trying to convince people, especially woke people. But then wouldn't the best course of action would be to just not say anything? Because if you say what? something and you make fun are of them, because if, well, if you make fun of them, then aren't you just going to push them stronger in their own personal direction? OK, there's two forms of there's two different things we're trying to do here. Right. Mm -hmm. One is convince people why they're wrong. That's one form of like why we do what we do right mm -hmm. at, at other points we're just trying to tell people like you don't get to tell us what to what to say right uh, that's a different form of why we do what we do right so for example when i went into the streets and i had the allah his gay uh, side right in that video right or when i burned the quran right do you think that I ever imagined that me holding a sign saying Allah is gay in the gay pride parade is going to make any Muslim think like, oh, right, Islam, okay, I get it now, Islam is wrong. Or do you think when I burned the Quran and I posted the video on YouTube, do you think any Muslim would ever watch that and think, oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, I'm not, yeah, I can see why why some people are skeptical about Islam and maybe I should reevaluate my beliefs. Do you think that's the outcome that I was hoping for? Oh, no. <laughs> right. Obviously, no. No. Obviously not. There's a different point to that. Right? What you right. call fanning the flames, I call not apologizing, not holding back, not letting people decide what is what jokes we can make and what jokes we cannot make, you know, not letting people self-designate themselves as language, you know, as language po police. When you give an inch to these people, they'll they'll come and they take miles, right? Mm -hmm. And there needs to be. This is like a fuck you to them. They're like, you know what? I think this is funny. You don't like it? Get the fuck out of my feed we shouldn't let these people dominate over us like what the f you know no. that's my point of this for this you know mm -hmm. like this offends you well go look at something else this is exactly what we did like with drama muhammad day this is what what we did with islam 
this is what we're doing with this woke cult. That's the point of this. Do you think that some people, though, are like, is it that they're telling you that you shouldn't or that um, these are jokes that you shouldn't be making or that they're criticizing you for making these jokes because they think you have an ulterior motive with them, given what you've been previously posting about? Woke what have I been previously there? posting that suggests I have an ulterior motive? The one, that's Maybe. one question. Second of all, are you seriously not as uh, are you seriously suggesting that these people are like the, this whole woke movement is not trying to silence people? Like you know I'm better specifically than... talking about the people commenting under your posts. No, yeah, but I'm not yeah, but I'm talking about this is in we're talking about an entire movement. We're not going over oh this person or that person. Um we have an entire community of people that see this as problematic and they would do whatever they can to remove you from everywhere because of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we need to normalize being able to laugh at things that we think are funny. And, you know, especially, I mean, comedy is always at the front lines of, um, you know, m m fighting against censorship, right? It's, it's, you know, censorship doesn't come overnight. Or, like, it doesn't come in the form of, hey, everything is fine, and then tomorrow, okay, no, let's, no, none of this should be allowed. Censorship comes in the form of slowly, like, oh, my God, this is offensive, this is problematic, you know? And, you know, every time you see those red lines being drawn slowly, you don't wait for those red lines to become, turn into walls, you have to piss on those red lines while they're just lines already, I think. I mean, how is this harmful to anybody? This is, you know, this is not yeah. even describing something that is inaccurate. <laughs> this is making something funny, something that is actually happening in the real world. Do you, um, are you of the mind that we should be, that when it comes to comedy, everything should be on the table, so it doesn't matter if people's feelings get hurt? When you make rape jokes, rape jokes should still be um, embraced. First of all, let's just be clear. This is not even close to a rape joke, right? Right. But uh, just, you know. Second of all, I think no, no speech should be limited. If I mean, I don't like rape jokes, but I don't think it should be banned. I think if I don't like it, I could just not consume it. I mean, didn't like... Who's it? Like, what? So who went there? Who was that guy? Louis C.K. Louis C.K. made rape, joke, rape jokes. Mm -hmm. Do you think they should have been banned? No, not banned, but rather we may we you know, we, we convince we convince society at large to the point where if a comedian makes a rape joke, most people in the audience would either walk out or confront him about it, saying you shouldn't be making those jokes. They're not yeah. legally mandating that that he shouldn't make those jokes, but right. most people, yeah. know, you you make it in a way in which there's a culture, in yeah. which people are way too scared to make rape jokes. Oh no no no! I'm okay with people making their comments about like I'm not telling these I'm not saying these people shouldn't comment and say why this is wrong. They should be able to comment, right? But um, I, it's it's getting beyond just commenting, right? This is going to be, this, you know, this woke movement has shown to be extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think, like, for, even with, for example, when Louis C.K. was making a rape joke, if, if he was intimidated to a point that he wasn't making rape jokes anymore, I would be like, yeah, this is too much power given to the mob. Anyways, I'm going to post this. What, what do you think the reaction to this one is going to be? I think it's going to be very similar to the racist one, where... Right. They're going to say, like, you're just using this meme as a way of disregarding actual, like, okay. arguments that we're making. Let me post that first and see if you're right, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. And while you post it, I want you to tell me what exactly have I posted before that would give the impression to anybody that should give the impression to anybody that I am, um, you know, right-leaning oh. or that I don't care about racism, um, in any way. This goes back to exactly what I said um, a few minutes ago, where even if you are on the left on just about every position, if you make one argument specifically, like, for instance, in your, your particular case with the Black Lives Matter, you are very critical of it. 
which is something that people expect uh, right wingers to be uh, critical of. So because of that, people will immediately think you're a right winger. I'm not, you know, so that's why what's that's what I mean when I say people will think you have ulterior motives. Not that you do, but that because of your stances on Black Lives Matter and on wokeness, and because those stances are popular among the right wingers, mm. they're just going to immediately assume that you're a right winger. Well, here's the thing: I have seen, I, I know there are a lot of left leaning people that want to say the things that I'm saying, right? In fact, some of the, even the most in um, bolder, um, non apologetic you know, fuck you, I say what I want people, um, are, I, I like reach out to them to come on the show and talk to me about it. And even they are saying, you know what, this is too much. I'm, I don't want to talk about this. Um, I, I, I agree with you, you know, in fact, some of them are more critical of BLM than even I am. Um, I mean, I see some positives coming from the movement, right? I'm not at all like it's all bad. I'm not. I don't. I don't know why people think I think it's all bad. Um, I don't think it's all bad. I'm just crit- criticizing the parts that I think is bad. But their like they their views is like oh yeah this is all bad and oh it's horrible and they don't like it. But they're not saying it because even they are now scared of what the backlash is going to be right. And to me that's a sign that shit man. I mean I need to say it more. Like I need to normalize this kind of um, you know people being able to say these things and the fact that the reason why this seems right leaning to a lot of people is because only it seems like only on the left people are being intimidated to a, to a point where they can't say the things they want to say right so it only looks like it's right leaning because of the woke cult successfully being able to hold its side of the you know political you know uh, 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 hold this side like on a dog leash you know what I mean they have been even though they're a fringe minority they have managed to take control mm-hmm. of what the, of what the discussions are yeah they've changed the conversation and I, and right. I agree with you 100% there are people uh, who hold very popular channels that I've spoken with behind the scenes and they agree with the with their stances on woke culture but they they, they won't directly tell me that they, they don't say anything because they're scared. One of them told me that he just uh, um, views himself as a spectator, right? Mm. And another one basically just, uh, he, he agreed that, that it's a problem. We, don't actually, we didn't actually like discuss why he didn't talk about it, but it, his channel doesn't really um, have anything to do with that sort of cultural problem. So I, I can understand if he doesn't talk about it. But there are some, there, there's some people out there that, they'll tweet something out and it seems like their tweet is a sly attack on woke culture in general. Um, and so it gives me the impression, I don't want to say that they actually are, or that they, I believe they are just that it gives me the impression that they might be on our side, but they don't want to come out fully in support of it. And this is one of, this is why I go back. Like when I get so, frustrated with people that say cancel culture isn't real it's not just the fact that people like even going so far as tenured professors are risking their jobs for speaking out about particular issues it's not just the fact that some people are being canceled or being deplatformed it's also the second word in there jay shapiro said made this and it really made me think about it it's the it's the culture word in there in cancel culture where we've created a culture in which people are scared of of giving out opinions that aren't that shouldn't be a big deal. They're too mm. scared of that. And the fact that there are popular YouTubes out, YouTubers out there that agree with us on the position of woke culture, but they're too scared to say anything because of their fellow atheists who are very much in the uh, many of them are in the SJW rabbit hole. I mean, that just proves the cancel culture point. There's a culture there. Right. So, th- okay. So, thank you for making my point for why I have to po- I have to post. Mm-hmm. Like okay, so usually, like if the, if we lived in normal times and, and people were not insane, I would post these just for the for just for the haha. Like hey, I found something funny. Let me share this with other people to f- f- laugh as well. And I think nobody should like you know. I think there's nothing wrong with that. 
But now I feel like this is just beyond haha. Like this is beyond. This is me. Like oh, th- this is what I shouldn't. You don't guys think I shouldn't be posting? Let me post some more because fuck you. That's what I think. You know, and and <laughs> exactly because of everything you just said. I mean, yeah. it's funny because normalizing dissent is supposed to be what ex-Muslims are stand for, right? And it's funny because a lot of them think like standing on the side of like. The woke is like they're dissenting against, you know, white supremacy. They're like, oh, yeah, you guys are dissenting. Uh, while every major corporation is on your side, the politicians on your side, mainstream media is on your side. Yeah, the great job dissenting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, but and then we, I post stuff like this, and then they, the, the people, the same people that say normalizing the same, normalizing the same, they want to cancel you, they want to kick you out of their groups, um, they want to shut you down, they want to see consequences for the things that you're saying, and they, they have, they have the, they don't see the irony that you know they think they're they're the ones that are actually fighting for dissent while mm-hmm. they're trying to shut down dissent. Yeah, I think you I think you changed my mind on this topic here. At first, oh. I was more on the line that from a utilitarian standpoint, even though I'm perfectly fine with these jokes, I think they're funny. Uh, just for the sake of not fanning the flames, I think it'd be more productive to engage in a conversation with them. But as you said, we have limited resources. And also the very fact that it's even going to fan flames in the first place is a problem so we need to normalize this type of behavior behavior which really is benign i hate these arguments that um you shouldn't make offensive jokes or anything like that because people's feelings might get hurt because it goes against my understanding of how humans work going back to what jonathan hyde says we didn't evolve to be fragile we evolved to be anti-fragile it's it's literally it's it seems like it's psychology 101 so I, I, I think you shifted my position on there. Thank you. Oh, wow. Why? Yeah. Okay. I'm a bit worried. I have. I, I have to remember when was the last time I changed my mind on something. Actually, I keep a list because when I don't do that often, I get mm-hmm. worried. I'm like, what the hell? Am I really thinking that I'm right about everything? So I keep a log of what major things I've changed my mind on. What was the last thing you changed your mind on? Okay, so the last thing was um, fasting and keto diet. So I think fasting fasting is bullshit and keto Mm -hmm. is bullshit. It's calories in, calories out. So... Mm -hmm. I was really deep into that. I like I thought like, oh, this is science. This is true. And actually, trying discovering that it's not made me appreciate more how more careful I have to be when it comes to uh, because there's a shit ton of people there. There, like I already knew this, but it's funny that even after I knew this, even after I thought I was being careful about it, I still fell for the idea that oh, there's these are this is scientific. Um, when when it was absolutely it was uh, uh, it was not right it was not right this is why I have to remind myself over and over again go to the primary source of sources I can't trust anyone like you have to go to the primary sources and look at the actual research you can't let people tell I mean you can but you have to double check a couple of times you can't let people tell you what the primary research says they they have an, their own agenda in what in their interpretation, right? Just go read the research papers yourself. And if the research papers are getting it wrong as well, then that's fine. You know, I mean, that's at, at that point, there's not much you can do, right? That's the best you have anyway. So realizing how wrong I was about fasting and keto reminded me of how, you know, give me a new appreciation for and and reminder for how skeptical I need to be with everything. Right. Um, I changed my way way of thinking about morality in the past year. I significantly changed that in my mind about that. Yeah. And I think it was the vegans who made me rethink everything. Um, 
and 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 my, the way I look at morality now convinced me that vegans are absolutely wrong. By the way, <laughs> but well, it was because of the vegan. Now? Well, that's a big big discussion. We, um, do you want to get into that? Okay, let me no, just, just quick just quick synopsis. Not no, no big discussion. Well, I think we talked about it actually. I think we, the, we did. That, that's yeah. why the, the first time you and I talked was actually about morality, and we agreed. Yeah. But that was over a year ago. So your views no, no. changed since that conversation? That was not over a year ago. I think uh, when I mentioned to you how we need to include um, our emotions in, in the calculation and we can't just like act like we're like robots that, mm-hmm. you know, that just takes in the facts and then calculates utility. Like we're dealing with flawed machines that is not like, uh, we're not like computers that is just always trying to figure out what's the most, uh, what produces the highest amount of utility? The machine works, operates on emotions, and you have to take that into account when you're trying to optimize for the best solution, right? Mm-hmm. So, including emotions in your calculation, people think like, "Oh, be logical, not emotional," and they're like, "Well, if you want to be logical, you have to take emotions into account." So that was my, um, that's how my view of you know, morality change. Like, so, so a lot of, a lot of moral, uh, paradoxes or whatever, um, puzzles, what is it called? Like the trolley problem, um, and a whole bunch of other ones like, oh, there's a girl in front of you drowning, but you care about this girl more than a thousand other children in somewhere else. Um, all of them were solved to me. I don't see any, um, for me based on just adding that element, I didn't see any paradoxes in any, like, there's nothing, there's no contradictions in any, any of them, right? The trolley problem, the trolley problem is not a problem for me anymore, because um, you have to understand that, yeah, so if you only look at it, like, as four people dying over there, one person dying over here, oh, you have to make the switch, because four people are more important than one person, if you just look at it like that, then... Yeah, then you see like there's no, you know what this answer is, right? But you have to understand that as emotional human beings, us physically being responsible for make, taking an action that leads to someone's death, that the negative utility of that should be added to their calculation because at the end of the day, everything you do when it comes to morality is about the selfish desire to be sympathetic to people or not. That desire of how how much you care about other people should be put next to your desire also not to be responsible for for making decisions on anybody dying and living, right? So the fact that that needs to be part of the calculation, you cannot like it, you know, you cannot remove that from the calculation, right? So and also the fact that oh, you can't, you should care about. A thousand children dying far, far away, for example, in Africa, as much as this one child that is dying right a thousand times more than a child dying next to you. No, you shouldn't. How could you? Like, that's impossible. Like, no, you can't. Like, we are wired to care about this. Like, think about it. Think about how distressing it is for you to see a child dying right next to you. No human being is capable of feeling a thousand times more distressed than that for, you know, like... That level of stress t- times all the children that are dying, no human being is capable of even experiencing that. So what are you even demanding? It's impossible. You're demanding people to feel in a way that they're not, their brain is not naturally desired to, to operate. And people are like, well, logically, this is the best thing to do. So this is how we should think. No, because you, what you're going to do is you're going to make people exa- you're going to exhaust people's emotional capacity, and instead of trying getting them to care about everything, you're going to get them to care about nothing, right? So that was my view on morality that changed. Um, you, you, notice, you don't remember the first time we talked though. What was this? This is more than a year ago. Yeah, this was more than a year ago. I was at UCSB. Oh, Okay, so this sucks because that means that it's been more than a year since I changed my mind about something very significant. So I this is this might mean that I'm being dogmatic about something. So I have to look harder to see what I'm what I'm wrong about. Okay. You think you're being dogmatic about the woke culture? Maybe. 
uh, I hope you could. Uh, yeah, of course it's possible. I'm, I'm not denying that. I, did I? I've never denied that it's possible for me to be wrong about that. I always say like, in many of my videos, not in all of my videos. Every time I talk about woke stuff, I always like, hey, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I hope somebody could show me how I'm wrong if I'm wrong, right? So, I'm not denying that. I I I hope I never came across as trying to deny that. Well, real quick on the topic of morality, though. So you went when we talked, you basically said that you thought morality was objective. So you literally went from morality is objective to subjective. Then no, because if, was... because if because if we're putting personal, uh, if we're putting our emotions into our calculation of moral decisions, then two people, if they have just a di uh, like a different level of sympathy, then they're get, they're going to reach different moral conclusions. Okay. So in the trolley problem, for instance, if I have more sympathy than you do, then I'd be inclined to pull the lever, whereas you wouldn't. Those are two separate moral conclusions that are based on our own personal subjective experiences. Okay, so morality was... Ne I never thought morality was objective in some sense, in one definition of what you mean by objective, and I always think it's objective in another definition of what you mean by it's objective, okay? So mm -hmm. if by objective it means that... Um, that hasn't changed. If by objective you mean, um, um, like, you know, here's the answer. Like it's kind of like math. Uh, we know what's wh what's moral or what's not moral is, you know, is independent of our opinions, and is independent of human thought, and is something within the fabric of the universe. Like, you know. What's right and wrong is like was was right and wrong even before humans existed, and before even if we, before we came up with the definition of morality and good or bad. If that's what you mean by objective, no, morality is has never been objective. It wasn't. Ob I never thought. I have never thought that morality is objective in that sense. Okay, um, and I still don't think so. But if you by objective, if by objective you mean given certain goals. Given certain goals, and the, that goal being maximizing utility, okay? Given those goals, there are right ways, there are better ways to achieve that goals, and there are worse ways, you know, to achieve that goal. There are good ideas and bad ideas, and these these methods, which ones are better and which ones are bad, could be objectively shown which ones are good and which ones are bad. Um, they could be studied, they could be analyzed, they could be, um, you know, that, I, I thought then that that's objective, and I still think that's objective. So how, how anything I said today contradicts that? No, I, I think that's in line with the conversation that I had uh, with you so so long as we have a goal right. and which is let's say our goal is to maximize utility then you would be maximizing your utility if you take into consideration your emotions rather than ignoring them right right so okay yeah so the, so, so yeah the, uh, here's the thing adding the emotion to the to the calculation doesn't mean that we're we're not being objective, okay? So I'm just, in fact, we're being more objective, okay? So here's the thing. For example, like you could say, like how could like so you could say like what are you talking about, Armin? Of, uh, based on the definition of uh, objective and subjective, if you look at what we think is good or wrong, that makes it subjective, okay? So here's the difference, right? Let's say you look at a painting and you say, this is, oh my God, this is a beautiful painting. And I look at it and I'm like, what are you talking about? This is crap, okay? So your opinion of the painting is subjective. My opinion of the painting is subjective, okay? However, here's an objective statement I can make about what's happening right now. Saying Vincent thinks that this is a beautiful painting, that's an objective statement. Saying this is a beautiful painting, that's a subjective statement. But saying Vincent thinks that this is a beautiful painting, that's an objective statement. Saying Vincent thinks this is a beautiful painting and Armin thinks this is a crap painting, that's an objective statement. Each one of us made a subjective statement, but describing what we think and what we feel, those are objective statements. Do you see the difference? Right. 
Right. What if we change our definition of morality into the one of well-being? Because I that definition is different than your definition of maximizing utility. How is if, that different? Isn't maximizing utility and maximizing well-being kind of describing the same thing? On a societal level, if we're talking about maximizing well-being, that would be different from maximizing your own personal utility. Oh, okay. So, I mean, you're just, yeah, I mean, so we're just defining, redefining the goal, right, here. Each one, well, that's what the it, thing, because I, I would make the argument that if most people, they would prefer the definition of morality on a societal level than on an individual level. So if you ask someone what is the more moral decision they would not take into consideration their own personal desires but rather what the desires of m most people at large would right be. i mean okay so yes let's that's what i'm focusing on as well so it's a, at a societal level when you want to decide what's right and what's wrong you still have to calculate people's emotions and and issues mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um especially you know so so, for example, um, and you have to take them into account and sometimes dismiss them, right? For example, we have due process, even though a mother of a raped child would be like, yeah, can you please burn this motherfucker, alive? Uh, you know, rapist alive? And yet in the society, even though we acknowledge why a person um, like that feels like that and we don't dismiss their feelings, we know that's not the right way to run a society, and that's gonna not gonna get the outcomes that we desire. And we, even for a rapist, we have due process, and we don't burn them alive, and all, any of that, right? Um, but at the same time, when it comes to at a societal level, uh, any kind of progress that needs to be made has to be made with trying to get the majority on your side because that's also how democracy works and to get the majority on your side you have to you cannot just dismiss people's emotions right i mean yeah you cannot you still have to even at a societal level you, you're working within um a structure you know that you still need you know you still need the authority given to you by the people and all of those people are emotional beings so even if you have objective um, solutions to real problems at least selling those you know objectively good solutions to real problems you cannot just, you know, you cannot just be like a benevolent dictator. That has never worked, right? You you have to sell that to people in a democracy. So even in a societal level, you have to take people's emotions into account. I think. Yeah. No, I I agree. I think there are some instances in which we you 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 worded this yourself. We would have to ignore a person's. Um, emotions for the greater good so you, you said you solved the trolley problem for instance um i'm assuming the way you solved it was that you wouldn't pull the lever because you're taking into account your own personal emotions and your own i would i would right? pull the lever because i'm not as emotional as a lot of people uh, okay. like but i'd see why somebody wouldn't mm -hmm. okay um yeah i mean i, I obviously would understand why somebody wouldn't so i'm not saying i don't but i would say in that scenario for instance it it would um from a moral standpoint i think there would be some level of expectation that someone should pull the lever if we're looking at the well-being of society at large because even though you're uncomfortable with it and i can understand why you're uncomfortable with it it is a it, the correct moral choice if we're talking about well-being would be the to pull the lever that would be the correct choice um the correct choice would be to yeah the correct choice would it be the correct choice i mean if you okay on an individual level it wouldn't be the correct choice right if you can't if your personal trauma let's say on an individual level right like you're like okay if i 
this is why the next level of the trolley problem is not a lever, but actually pushing somebody in front of the train to stop the train, right? right? This is what the point is they're trying to be made. Like, let's say that you're not pulling the lever, but in se- to, to save the four people, you need to push a fat man in front of the trolley, and the fat man is big enough to stop the trolley, and killing one person will stop the other four, right, from dying. Why are we going to this next level? Because we we understand that there is a... Like, logically, if we were dealing with a robot, you would be like, well, this is the same thing as pulling the lever. So if you were ready to pull the lever, you should also be ready to push the fat man in front of the train. There's technically no difference. But we know there's a difference. The difference is we are emotionally more traumatized (laughs) by actually putting our hands on a human being and pushing them in front of a train. You cannot deny that that's traumatizing to somebody. And because we can't deny that that is that is traumatizing somebody, it's it's bizarre for us to go and be like, oh, you just killed four people by not pushing a fat man in front of a train. Like, how you're a moral monster. This is the same as pulling the lever. So why didn't you do it? Like, like I like obviously that's a sub, such a ridiculous standard for us to have for an individual, for them to be just like an, you know, unemotional machines that just wants to calculate how to maximize utility. You, any everybody we okay so this at a societal level our expectation should be that everybody is just trying to maximize their own utility even when they care about other people right so i think as th- this is what i'm saying if you want to maximize utility for the highest number of people the only way you could do that is to motivate people to get on your side to to at the process of um at, you, you can't do this alone. No, but no economist or philosopher or thinker like, oh, this is the right solution. Okay, fine, you solve the world's problems. No, you, you have to do this with the people. You're demanding people to change their behavior. Like, obviously, any solutions to making the world a better place involves convincing people to your way of doing things, right? And because it involves that, we also have to recognize that every individual is acting selfishly even when they're being sympathetic towards other people, right? Because they're acting out of their own best interest of wanting to care for other people. They get emotional satisfaction for that, right? So given that that, that increasing of you know, personal utility by being sympathetic to other people has to be put next to all the negative utilities of, you know, the emotional trauma or anything that they have to deal with, that will help us come up with a solution or a recommendation to the society uh, that takes all of this into account, right? Rather than, because even if you come up with a solution that gets the best utility, if people say like, oh yeah, that gets the best utility, but there's no way I'm going to live like that, so... Your solution doesn't mean like, okay, yeah, that's, oh yeah, great. That, that creates the most amount of happiness in the world, but that kind of life sucks. So mm. nobody's going to live like that. So your solution is worthless, right? So. Would it be worthless though, if you could actually convince people that that is what they would prefer? Yeah, but 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 to be able to do that, to, to convince people that this is something they would prefer, you can't do that by telling them to go against their wiring and mm-hmm. or, or, or care about 1,000 children somewhere dying as much as the one that next, lives next to you or care about, or, oh, did you do about, what did you do about these crimes happening here? Nothing. Oh, you're a moral monster. You don't care. So, oh, really? So everybody has to do everything about every, you know, something about everything. That's obviously a dumb expectation. Um, you know, oh, you know, it's, it's trying to get to people to care about just something instead of telling them that, uh, or if they care about themselves, if they indulge in self, you know, pleasure in, by you know sometimes you know buying stuff for themselves instead of donating it you know all of these messaging uh, messages it, like none of this works like yeah you can convince people that, uh, that they want something that they didn't know they want but it has to be within the limitation of what your nature and the wiring of your brain allows until the day that we manage to rewire our brain that's what you're dealing with, I think. Mm-hmm. 
we do have though mechanisms in the brain like it, it's not a complete rewiring right because i mean vegans managed to to do it just fine where we were evolutionarily programmed to eat meat and to love meat but vegans sort of through reason and argumentation they've convinced themselves that their lives are better off not eating meat because they don't like contributing to the conditions that animals are placed under or the fact that we consider ourselves the arbiter of who gets to be eaten and who doesn't so in those yeah you know you mentioned extreme cases i mean yeah of course those are you're not going to be able to rewire ourselves in those situations but with something like veganism or with the trolley problem do you think that we i mean we genuinely could just be it, it wouldn't be that big that much of a rewiring of our brains to be convinced of something like that um, I mean, for example, with veganism, it's the same as it is exactly the same as the example I always give. It's like I have my aircon on, even though I could turn it off right now and be a little bit, be a lot more uncomfortable uh, in this heat and donate the money. Like my electricity bill is high, man, mm-hmm. but I could have donated that money to saving um like very easily like i could just jump right now on paypal within a few seconds i could st- save a child from starvation uh, and get that money from not having my air con on right yeah. um so technically what i'm doing is morally equivalent to having a child delivered to me every day for me to sacrifice um in fact that would be more human because i could sacrifice a child without them suffering from starvation right if my air, my aircon is running on starving children right now, okay? Um, so basically, vegan, vegan, like every time somebody says like, oh, you could commit, you could be responsible for some, a little bit less misery if you just stop eating meat. I mean, do you really want to p- play that game? Because unless they are somebody that have exhausted every single possible way that they could be reducing misery, um, then they're no one, you know, I mean, yeah, I could reduce misery a little bit by stop, by not eating meat, but so I could also do that by turning off my aircon. I don't know where these shirts were made, but I'm pretty sure somebody suffered, uh, from making them. There's like, I mean, I, you know, look at these headphones costed a lot of money. I didn't have to buy that. I could have donated that money. Right. I don't have to look at this. I don't have to. I don't have to smell good. I could stink all the time. I'm doing live streams. Nobody has to smell me. Right. Right. But that, wouldn't that be an extreme case, though? Because someone could say, yeah, obviously, we could literally go full blown minimalists and, and reduce the total amount of suffering in the world. That's not what we're going for, though. We're just going for a small increase in sympathy and that, you know, you even though you couldn't go full minimalist, <coughs> you could go vegan that is something that you could do yeah no yeah yeah but i'm not saying go full minimalist i'm saying that could be applied to any one of these things right you don't mm-hmm. have to go full minimalist but you can turn off your aircon i could keep the headphone i could keep like using this so that i don't stink all the time um i can you know there's so many examples i could keep all of those things and just do one thing and turn mm-hmm. off my aircon just turn off okay. my aircon. I use that money. Why are they not demanding that one thing? Mm-hmm. Right? There's many yeah. one things you could do. But I'm saying everybody picks their battles. Right? I have picked my battles. And I think that the activism that we should be encouraging people to, to do is just to pick a battle. Not mm-hmm. pick every battle. Or pick the battle that I'm picking because I think my battle is the most important battle. If you could, get, if you could just convince people to from being not caring about anything to just caring about something to make the world a better place. I think you will come a lot. Like if the number of people that don't give a shit about anything is so high that if you could just get them to care about one thing, you have made a lot of progress, right? There is, it's easier to get people who don't care about anything to care about one thing than to, than getting people that care about a whole bunch of things to care about also your, your brand of activism, right? Uh, and I think you get a much higher return for your investment if you did that, right? Especially if your form of activism is coming at the cost of people 
um, that could have cared about something to actually not care about it. So I, this is why I think like a lot of vegan activism is that not actually helping animals, it's hurting animals. Because it would have been easy to get a lot of people to get on board with fighting a- against animal abuse, but vegans instead are trying to get them to stop eating meat, and they have associated all of the animal rights activism, a lot of it, with just veganism. And a lot of people have completely washed their hands off of caring about animals. I think it would have been an easier sell to just get people to push for passing the regulation. I mean, people are already anti-big corporate. People already love animals. It would have been easy to get a lot of support for people to just pass like legislation. If all of this activism on veganism was spent on that, uh, we would have saved a lot more animals, right? Mm-hmm. I think. I think. Yeah. Someone could say on the vegan side, yeah, okay, you make a good point there, right? Why don't we just only buy American-made shirts so we know that they're not being made in factories to, um, by children? Or why, you know, why not get rid of my air conditioning unit? But the amount of lives that the amount the amount of suffering that is being reduced if we go vegan is so much higher than the amount of suffering being reduced if not we if just buy I, American-made products. Not if I just stop being just one. Uh, Right, but this uh, this is the whole argument, right? That it's just convincing one person one by one to the point where yeah, you start a movement you you and then eventually switch, it changes. You switch from, oh, why don't you just you do it? And that's a small change uh-huh. to all of a sudden switching to all of a sudden changing the argument like, oh, if we keep doing it. So what is it? Are you caring about just me doing it? Or are you change, caring about an, an overall, uh, you know, reducing misery in a significant way as a whole, right? Because you would, mm-hmm. the discussion was just about me personally, right? And what I'm saying, if you, um, if you want to reduce misery in a significant way, we have seen time and time and again that doing political activism or trying to get people to support like certain major reforms on industries or politicians, that has moved, like made much more change Changing personal behavior doesn't even move the needle that much. You know what I mean? Um, Even when it comes to, like, global warming. Like, if all of the people that are like, oh, I'm not going to drive to work, I'm going to bike to work. um, I mean, that's good for health reasons. But, you know, like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to recycle, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I mean, if all of that activism was spent on, like, hey, what are all these ships, like, you know, like... In passing one legislation that could like change the way all the ships, uh, the regulation of the carbon emissions of these giant ships that move our products, right? Like um, passing one regulation on you know having higher uh, carbon tax or something like that. You know those things make dramatic changes, right? For example, even if you think okay, so for when it comes to eating meat, I think. It, it, even if that's your goal, like you want less people to eat meat, if you had focused your activism on taxing meat, government taxing meat, and spending that extra revenue to fighting against animal abuse, you would have changed more people's behavior when it comes to meat consumption than chasing after people and telling them not to eat meat. Mm-hmm. You know, just increasing the price of meat through, through taxes. You know what I mean? That, no, that... Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, we were talking the morality about well-being on a societal level, though, right? So, I mean, doesn't it logically connect then to say, yeah, it's just one person. You yourself aren't reducing the footprint on meat eating. But again, one by one, this starts a, a, a social Yeah, But movement. even if you went one by one, I'm saying their methods is, wouldn't be. Oh, as no, no, no. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I'm just trying to use what they would say. Right. Yeah. I agree with you that that um, a lot of damage could have been done if the vegan movement had different PR. Right. Um, I just caught, by the way, I just got called the bigot on my YouTube channel. Really? Congratulations. Is this your first time? I This is officially my first time getting called. A, I'm sure oh. some people might have called me a bigot behind my back, but first time uh, I got a comment on a video in which we were talking about Trump, China and the pandemic. And the comment says, oh, look, two bigots sucking each other off. And I click on the comment. I, I don't know if he deleted the actual comments or something, because when I go to the video, his comment's not there. It's just in my notifications. Hmm. 
Yeah, why, did he why, why were you a racist again? Um, let's see. I don't know why. Let's see. Trump, because the video is called Trump, the pandemic and the China question. I guess it's because I was pretty adamant about holding China accountable for the um, coronavirus. And I guess I mentioned the fact that on a list of things we need to be concerned about when it comes to China, calling it the Chinese virus is literally way low on the list. Mm. So I guess that's that might be it. It's not a controversial episode. It's one of our least controversial episodes. Why do you call me a bigot? I mean, I disagree with you, but that's not a, you're not a bigot. Right. Oh, really? What, what do you disagree with me on? I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to, uh, once something that is like, so if somebody is being a racist, it doesn't have to be the world's biggest problem for us to call it out as racist. Uh huh. I, I, I mean, I, I think I said in that podcast that, oh. yeah, we should, um, we should we should be concerned about the uptick in hate crimes towards Asian Americans that happened after the Chinese fires, but it's still low on the list of things to be worried about. Because just because it's low on the list of things to be concerned about doesn't mean you shouldn't be concerned about it. It just means you shouldn't be as concerned as oh, the yeah. fact China covered it up. That's and, fair. Yeah. By the way, some um, oh, you know how I I, I post, post oh. No, you know how I posted, I'm not going to reshape and reformulate my opinion in a way that is digestible to you as a white person, right? It's oh, getting that's... likes and hearts instead of laugh emojis. I hope people don't <laughs> think I was, I hope people don't think I was serious. I, I, are people un- ironically liking the comment and thinking that I was genuinely like making a comeback using that as me, them being a white person as an argument? Uh, well, let's see who liked it, and let's see if they've liked it. Don't they... call them out right now. I don't want them to feel like maybe... Uh, don't call... Oh, yeah. And... Let's see. Oh, where's the comment? I don't know what they think. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you got it. Let's see. Why is it getting likes and hearts and not laugh emojis? Like people think I'm genuinely saying that as a not a joke way. People don't get jokes. That's a problem. I mean, it's a problem online for sure because it's difficult to convey sarcasm through text. But they should, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> like these are people who followed my recent post. They should they should know that that's not something I would say. I know what to do. I'll I'll. Post it. And I say, I'll ask before if I'm doing it right. Oh, my God. This is a, you're a twist, you're twisted, man, he replied with. Uh, and someone gave him a little laughy face. You know, far left messages. Logic dog abusing buzzwords. one. Oh, oh! I think he got in a Twitter spat with this, or not Twitter spat. Sorry, comment spat with this guy. But he deleted his comments because you see, like replies to a comment that does that's not there. So I think the Zofer guy deleted his comments. Click on all. Sometimes Facebook automatically removes. Oh. Yeah, some people are accusing you of just uh, espousing anti-SJW spizzle or whatever. Wait, anti-SJW? When when was that a bad thing? Again, it goes back to the fact that the anti-SJW crowd is right-leaning, right? Because Milo Yiannopoulos is anti-SJW. You're just like Milo Yiannopoulos for this is him. what this is because of the left leaning anti SJWs are fucking cowards. Uh, I mean, I'm to be fair to them, they're not. They have jobs to worry about. They have careers. They have so again. So I guess I understand. I understand. I understand. That's why I have to do it because I don't have anything to lose. Man, I can't imagine living your life here. Why? 
this doesn't get to you. Like, I'd be lying if I said that if I was in your position getting this much backlash that it wouldn't get to me. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, okay, so it sometimes gets to me when it's from somebody that um, I admired, but it, but I get over it in, like, you know, a few hours. That's it? A few hours? Yeah. Oh, wow. I just dismissed them as somebody I cared about. Hmm. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. It's fine. I'm used to it. Yeah, I can't say I've lost friendships over this quite yet. I mean, technically, uh, that one guy that I was talking to you before we started recording, we were we were pretty friendly. We'd message each other from time to time, but he sort of just completely lost all contact with me, I mm. guess, ever since then. But aside from that, I, you know, even like the most far left of friends that I have, they really, they they like, they'll agree with me, but they'll just say it's not that big of a problem. So they just focus on, this is what, this is what's so weird that sometimes with these friends that I have that say like, oh yeah, I agree with you. The woke people are crazy, but they're not that big of a deal. But then I'll see them, uh, Re, like posting something that is like still pretty woke right like they'll like be like yeah read white fragility i'm like dude those are the people that i'm criticizing <laughs> like, who exactly like who are you envisioning as the woke people like these people must be insane like, right. like i'm literally like criticizing people like you who are okay with um but the, but that's a good thing though like if somebody for example likes like oh yeah white fragility yay and then looks at you or comments and they're like oh i see your point here to me, it's just that, well, I mean, they disagree with you, but they're open to be like, you know, I'm not comp- I'm not willing to just dismiss people who are telling me I'm wrong. Like, it means I, I see it as a good sign. I don't know. Do you ever, uh, here's an interesting experiment that I've been thinking about. On, on Instagram, there's this post in stories that's going around saying, if you're against rape, repost this. And I know who's looking at my stories, so I will know that you've seen it, and you do not repost it, and I will think you're a jackass. What do you think of those funny posts? Oh my god, what the fuck? That one, that one's pretty popular. It's been going around on my Instagram. Jesus Christ, I would be like, so what? What does it mean if you don't share it? That you're a pro rape? Pretty much. Let me look it up exactly. Um, so just be like, I would respond to it that like put me down as pro rape, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what do you want. <laughs> it reminds me of those. Uh, That's a joke, by the way, for the YouTube fucking whatever. I don't know. Oh shit! Was it already twenty four hours on this guy's? Oh, let me look at the other ones. Instagram has been pretty um pretty crazy. I think like that's the Instagram is slowly becoming Tumblr at this point. Really? In regards to how far I don't know if it's just my circle of friends or whatnot, but man. A lot of uh, a lot of Tumblr posts I'm seeing on here. A lot, a lot, a lot of uh, so many people. Again, I don't take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt because this is strictly my own group of people. A lot of anti-cop stuff on here for sure. Oh look, there's an AOC post. Um, what are your thoughts on AOC? Mm, I really only know her social positions, um, like in depth. I'm not, from what I understand about populism, I don't, I'm not really a left wing populist. I'm pretty much like a Pinkerian centrist, I guess. So when I took the, uh, 
when I took those tests that tell you which presidential candidate you associate more with, I got number one was Andrew Yang. Number two was Joe Biden. And I think number three was Cory Booker back when he was in the race. So I'm pretty it seems like I agree with establishment types people. So I'm not really pop like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren were the last ones on my list. So based on that, I would expect my politics to not align with her. But I definitely don't align with her social views. You're pretty um last time I checked you were a libertarian. Are you still a libertarian? Yeah. Are you like uh, Dave Rubin libertarian or more like oh, Michael fucking, Sherman libertarian? No, no, I'm small L libertarian, not big L libertarian. Okay, so like Michael Shermer then. I don't know. Don't put me down as somebody that I don't know. Hold on. I mean I know Michael Shermer, I just don't know their views on libertarianism. So, so the, the big libertarian libertarianism is completely not libertarian. Like the, what passes as libertarian is these days is like a fuck government kind of attitude that is so not in line of my in line with my understanding of libertarianism. Mm. Every time somebody says I'm a libertarian, I'm like, oh, you're a fuck government kind of guy, aren't you? And then I'm like, yep, they are. That's not libertarianism. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's good that we clarified that because some people would have gotten the impression that you're a Dave Rubin, fuck the post office kind of libertarian. Oh, my God, no. I mean, it, people are like, oh, yeah, fr uh, free market capitalism. Yeah, no government, fuck government. Government's over the problem. And like, you guys, like, have you, n like, the whole idea of capitalism was that we need the government <laughs> to create an environment where people are, feel safe and secure enough to do trade, um, there's a shit ton of role for the government. Like, if, if you look, if you read, like, Wealth of Nations and everything else, like, government, like, you know, and if you understand capitalism, you know that it takes into account that the market is blind to positive and negative externalities. And not only the government's role is to come and create a safe environment where all this can happen, it should also even get involved in the market to adjust for the positive and negative externalities. So I don't know what these people think. Like, it seems like they confuse libertarianism with anarchy. I don't know. Like, they think a government is always a problem. But no, in a free market capitalist system, there's a shit ton of role for the government. And gov the government is the solution to many things. I can't find a single one of those posts, even though I swear to God, I, I saw a bunch of them. But yeah, I agree. It's so weird. You know, the Dave Rubin argument when he was on Joe Rogan talking about building codes where you can trust people to make the safest building just based on market incentives. And he thinks that people aren't going to cut corners. It, it, it's so weird, right? It reminds me of, some, of like economists who would write down things. They sound good on paper. And because, you know, the one thing that everyone talks about economics, they, like the one thing you can't do in economics is assume that people act, behave rationally. And it seems like Dave Rubin consistently thinks that people are going to behave rationally. He's an interesting fellow. But that's the one topic that I like. I really want to do much more research on because I see so many people on Twitter that are like hardcore political people. Um, like and I'm and they'll like talk about these really esoteric political positions. And I'm like, geez, I really need to like do so much more research when it comes to politics. So that's mainly why like, I don't talk too much about politics. I mean, I don't even know why we can consider Dave Rubin like a serious thinker to even worry about what he thinks about. I only, you... I only consider what he said. Like, I don't consider him a serious thinker at all, but I take what he says um, seriously because he has such a big following and so many people believe him. And it's so funny to like, there, there's this great uh, Twitter page called Dave Rubin Clips where he'll, he'll tweet out the most embarrassing Dave, Ru um, Dave Rubin positions. So like most recently he said something like, um, Trump would, uh, we, we need Trump to fight. What was it? Let me go on it. It's so funny. Like he, um, it was just recently posted how he says that we need religion back because all these atheists are, are, um, 
destroying American values. God damn it. He went full blown like religious religious um send me that. I might review that actually. That's kinda of funny. I'll send it to you right now on, on Twitter. Dave Rubin clips. Was that a wild wait, was that in like Oxford University? I might have saw no. seen that. Oh, okay. This was it was in an interview with Michael Knows. Is this recent? Yeah, this was recent, yeah. Hmm. Okay, let me just tell you the two other things that I changed my mind on. Um, a full-on toppling of the government in Iran it could do more harm than good. It could cause a civil war that lasts for decades. And people shouldn't be so hasty with when it comes to making decisions like that. Especially if the price that could be paid for it will be it, it, the price would be paid for in blood. Um, so I think it's a res- irresponsible, especially for Iranians outside of Iran, to keep pushing for that, even though they would not be the people that would be paying the price for it if it goes wrong. So that's something I changed my mind on it. Again, I'm skeptical about that. I'm not saying I agree with it, you know, for it or against it either way. Also, oh, we, we just mentioned this. The... the I have some criticism of, of capitalism myself, uh, but it's none of the stuff that the socialists or the communists say. I know, I, I know what's wrong with capitalism. I think I know. And this is something I changed my mind as well. Hmm. You know, one of the things that always amazes me is when you talk about Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern politics and... Um, foreign like the effects of foreign policy i remember when i i remember telling mars this after we had you on our podcast like it blows my mind just how much he knows and how knowledgeable he is oh me i yeah you uh. like i like it really blows my mind um huh. so like I, and i know you like you've had a lot of experience with this sort of thing but and you basically like whole host a podcast about it but like it still blows my mind wow. like just how much you know Watching you on that podcast that you had with Bosch and being able to come up with a bunch of things at the top of your head, it's like, fuck, I really need to do my research. <laughs> that, wow, that's nice. That's That was so nice to hear. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And Twitter. I, especially coming from you. Because, yeah, you know a ton of shit. You you're the person like you're like you keep saying oh I've read this book I, I'm going to read it again and then I oh like you keep have like I don't know you go you go through uh, books like they're cakes so so that mm-hmm. coming from you is like very nice to hear I, I appreciate it like but again like the politics thing is the one thing where like I feel like I've read a bunch of books on politics but whenever I hear other people talk about politics like so confidently it's like how are you like I don't know I just I'm not. Well, I, I'm nowhere near as confident in my position on politics as other people are. Well, maybe your position is the right one because maybe they just maybe because it's not that easy. So I mean, people should be more skeptical about their position on politics. So maybe maybe you are more skeptical because you've read more. <laughs> You're you realize that things are more complicated than people make it seem to be. So maybe maybe. Um, maybe it's not a bug. It's a feature of knowing more that you're more skeptical about your position. Hopefully, or maybe I'm just a pseudo intellectual. No pseudo intellectual person would ever consider the fact that they might be a pseudo intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> is it just the elite? Oh, this is funny. Dave Rubin, who claims he's, I love the, I swear, man, Dave Rubin clips is like one of the best channels on Twitter. Dave Rubin, who claims he's not a conspiracy theorist, suggests that Hillary Clinton may have been involved in Anthony Bourdain's death. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, is that a channel? I'm going to subscribe. Hold on. It's so funny, man. Oh, this is what we were talking about, actually. His stance on building codes. Dave Rubin addresses oh, the he... public humiliation he suffered following Joe Rogan's podcast, 
claims that he was only there for ideas and wanted to have a fun intellectual exercise. Didn't expect any pushback. Oh, wow. That's what he did. Like, he was in the secular jihadist. I think he didn't expect any pushback from that as well. That's why he he just wants a safe space, right? Mm -hmm. and... He does. He, get, he, he blocks so many people on Twitter. It's astounding. Oh, I remember this. He suggested that Candace Owens should run for Congress or Senate or, or some governmental position. And they and Joe Rogan was like amazed. He's like, "Are you like he?" Joe Rogan was like, "Are you high yeah, right yeah. now?" Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That was crazy. No, he said that he thinks Candace Owens is more influential than Kanye West. Mm -hmm. um, but here's where's the where's that YouTube channel? I'm not seeing it. No, I no, no. Uh, Twitter, Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Ah, I don't consume cr Twitter. I just go on Twitter and post something and check my mentions and then go. I don't go on the feed. Dave Rubin clips. I can't find the specific one where he was with mm. Moles talking about. Oh, <laughs> Dave Rubin reveals that the reason he blocks people frequently on Twitter is to avoid losing his hair again. I remember that I read his book and his book in his book he talks about how he started losing his hair um when he left the young Turks. By the way, I just want to clarify when I said I think I I, I have some issues with capitalism, I, I said for capitalism is the best model, even with its flaws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I would say um in a vacuum. Cap like if we could only pick between pure socialism, pure capitalism, pure communism, what have you, like it it's obvious that pure capitalism would be the best route. Mm. But that's like in a vacuum. Right. The one of the main problems with capitalism. So you know, for example, a lot of a lot of people that have the wave the flag of capitalism, they're also the same people that are defending corporate corporations being able to lobby politicians to get their way, which is one of the main no nos in capitalism is for the government to get in bed with private business. But yet the people that wanted to pretend to be on the side, they're not pro capitalism; they're just bi pro big corporate, right? Mm. And technically, capitalism is not pro big corporate. Capitalism has a lot of features in it that tries to limit big corporation, like it's anti-monopoly, anti-government favoritism, anti all of that. But these people think like they they change the definition of being pro capitalism as to mean being for big corporations, right? Yeah. Um, Even though that's just just crony capitalism. Yeah, I mean, it's the opposite of capitalism. If the government ever gets involved with private business, it will be to break them apart because they got too big. <laughs> That's how in a capitalist society is supposed to be working. Not like, oh, like them giving you... You know, the whole concept of lobbying is against capitalism, right? Because it's the government getting in, in bed with private businesses, right? But here's the problem, though. Here's the problem with capitalism. Capitalism says that, you know big money shouldn't come and influence politicians, right? And the problem with that is that nobody can stop big money. <laughs> to, you know, like it sounds a little bit like the communists would say, well, in an ideal world, this would work because this is how people, should, if, if this is how people behaved, our model would have worked, right? So this sounds a, a little bit similar, a little bit similar for capitalists to say, like, I'm not talking about the people pretending to be capitalists. I'm talking about the actual true capitalism. Even there's even a flaw there because they're saying if money was, if big if businesses were completely separated from government and the government was not acting in the best interest of big corporations, our model would work perfectly. But there is no wall that could stop money powerful you know organizations finding a way to get their hold on the politicians right there is no way you can stop that any power any power that you could create that will that will stand in that way well they have the people on that side they have the resources they have more power they will find a way i mean 
they will make a hole in your goddamn wall, right? So that's a kind of like, it seems like, it sounds a little bit like a communist to say like, oh, if people just behave this way, our model will work. So, but pe well, people don't behave that way. So you need to take that into account, right? Uh, another problem is that, you know, people keep comparing themselves to, you know, if, again, I always say like, if you have a hut and everybody around you is homeless, you feel like you're rich. But if, if you have a hut and everybody around you has a mansion, you feel poor and miserable, right? But capitalism sees a hut as a hut. If you have a hut, you have a hut. That's the measure of happiness, okay? In, in the, you know, if you have a hut, you're better off than not having a hut. So that's good. You have a hut, right? It doesn't adjust for the fact that if you have a hut and everybody has has a man, if, if if you have a hut and everybody has a mansion around you, the fact that your happiness is now actually low, it doesn't calculate that. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If if we if we're just if we're if our eventual goal is to make people happy, not just wealthy, then. Capitalism is blind to that. Capitalism is blind to the fact that a hut, in you know, is it is a different. It, it involves producing less a, a different amount of happiness, based on what other people have around you, right? Um, capitalism is like, hey, who can you know? If if you go with a pure capitalistic model, the wealth disparity doesn't really matter, right? It's like, look, capitalism brings the highest number of people out of poverty more than any other moral. I, it doesn't matter if people, the difference between extremely rich people and poor people is becoming wider and wider. Who gives a shit about that? I'm bringing people out of mo poverty more than any other system. That should be all that matters. But because that's not all that matters, because people, the more the, division, the disparity between the rich people and poor people is, people people's perception of how poor and how happy they are is going to be lower, that social unrest will at some point break the system. Mm -hmm. There needs to be something that takes that into account. So these are the limits. quality is something that you're worried about? Well, not because I, I think it matters. I think it shouldn't matter. Logically, it shouldn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Logically, it should matter what, what's happening to the worse off. But because it matters to people, and it, I think like if people were being logical, it shouldn't matter. But because it matters, because people are not logical, and because it matters to them, this goes back to how more we were talking about morality as a uh, from a societal aspect. We have to actually care about people's feeling, because it does matter to people, and because people are eventually are going to be so upset with the system that they just might break it, break it a whole part and destroy the good with the bad. It should matter to us. It should be part of our calculation because it does matter to people. Do you know what's funny? So I was it went full circle. Yeah, go on. It's good. I was literally thinking in the same exact manner about representation today when I was at Target. Because I was, I, I was, um, representation to me personally does not matter. I do not care if I'm playing a video game and he's not Mexican or Chinese, as you like to say. Right. But it matters to other people for some reason, and I don't think it—I don't think it should matter. I don't representation shouldn't matter to me, but it does matter to a bunch of people. So, I like in that way, by definition, then using my own moral code, I should strive for a world of represent in which people can be represented more, uh, more than they are being now, even though I don't think it should matter, and I don't personally care about it. So that, but that's interesting. What What are your thoughts on representation? By the I way? see your point. Um, however, I actually think that I might be considered woke on this one. I don't know. I think yeah. representation actually does matter. Mm -hmm. I think kids growing up seeing black superheroes next to white superheroes next to gay superheroes. I mean, if you're gay and growing up and you think like there's something fucking wrong with you and you should be ashamed and then you're watching TV and one of the superheroes is gay, I 
I think that helps. I think that's there's no. I mean, I think that helps. I think that makes you feel like you know what? Yeah, I'm, I I live in a society where this is accepted. Yeah, why not? But this that goes back to um, uh, the fact that it's it, like you know, for me personally, it doesn't matter, and I don't think it should matter because if I was in that situation and I was gay, uh, growing up, and I don't see any gay superheroes, I I personally wouldn't care because it doesn't mm. like for you know right. You personally wouldn't care, but you see I, why other people would care. And my, yeah, yeah, okay. That, yeah, that's yeah. why I would take it into my calculation. Right, right, right. So that, that's the same thing with income inequality. I agree with you that, um, as, I, as I mentioned before, from what I understand, I'm more of a Pinkerian centrist in which I admire the fact that capitalism increases the level of poverty. And it is, uh, sorry, uh, increases the, um, the amount of people being brought out of poverty. And... That to me would be what would matter, but because people care about income inequality, and as you mentioned, and, and there are studies out there that demonstrate that people, um, people's happiness actually goes down if they recognize that their neighbor is so much better, better off right. than they are. And so, even though logically it shouldn't matter, it goes back. It, it actually goes back to what you were saying at the beginning, as you said, it, we went full circle. The fact that we have to take our feelings into consideration. You know, right. we can't just be these robots. But here's the thing, you you personally might not care because maybe you're privileged. That's true. Maybe, because I live I yeah. live in uh well what if you were what if I, you were gay and not only gay, but you were gay in a society where people see saw you as less or ridiculed you or made you feel ashamed, um or maybe you were trans or whatever, then if you experienced that, maybe you would be in a situation that you would personally uh, care to get some validation from you know from the media from society that it's okay to be you yeah. i can understand that argument in third world countries i in less so in first world countries where these things are already pretty much normalized. well maybe maybe they become more normalized because of work like this mm -hmm. because of will and grace because of representation maybe that's why it's it made that progress Right. Not our, well, I mean, that goes back to, um, is it our moral codes that cause representation or representation that is causing our moral codes? Maybe both. Maybe yeah, it's a circular true. thing. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 um, in you my could family, go overboard with it, though. Like, I'm, 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 I, think, I think representation sucks when you do it in a place where it's not about communicating to the, these people that you're accepted, right? Like, if you're in a fucking boardroom... And you're like, oh, half like of a corporation that is not a media company or anything. Like you're making ketchup. And like, oh, half of the people in this boardroom should be women. And we need some black people. And we need some trans people. And like, no, you, you know what? You, you guys could go fuck yourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't mean like that's not going to produce like no. Just go based on qualifications. All of this is horseshit, right? Yeah. Where I think representation matters when you are producing entertainment comic books children's stories because it goes beyond it's not just about who's most talented it's also about making people feel like there's an extra utility to putting the mis putting visual um validation of your who you are and you feeling like you're accepted and it also backfires by the way if I think it only works if the representation is done in a way that, hey, look, there's a gay superhero and nobody cares that they're gay, <laughs> right? Rather than making them being gay front and center and everything about who they are, right? Like, I think representation could be also, even when it comes to media and entertainment and all of that, there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. Like, I think if you, like, if you make the representation like, I'm special because I'm gay, this could backfire because instead of telling people like, oh, it's okay to be you and you, these things shouldn't matter, we're actually turning back the clock and making it like, oh, no, no, these things really matter. Like you're making things that shouldn't be part of your identity, um, like your sexual orientation, your gender, your skin color. There's a lot more interesting things about you that makes you you that should be part of your identity. And I think representation should be about making these things not matter anymore rather than making them the entire focus of who you are and your identity. You know what I mean? Yeah.
That's a very good point, actually. I think you, yeah. Creating a world in which representation no longer matters, but it clearly matters right now. Right, hmm. right. Do you think that's your most wokish stance? I, I can think of a more wokish stance than that, that I have. My most wokish stance is... What's your most woke? What is yours? I'll think of something. I genuinely believe that general attitudes towards women needs, need to change like dramatically. I think what women undergo when it comes to the male gaze and when it comes to the way that they feel in professional situations is horrendous. And I'm fully on board with trying to create a culture in which men no longer react towards women in the way that they've been reacting towards them. So I not not, not to say that I believe in the the one in three rape statistic for instance on college campuses I think the statistics are very um very um muddy on that. But generally speaking uh, the way men view women, I think, need, you know, those attitudes need to change. Yeah, I don't. Th- I, th- I agree with that. I don't think like, oh, training men how to stop being such, you know, so, again, this is not an anti-male thing to say. A lot of men are untrained about how to be, how to not be creeps, mm-hmm. how to not be awkward around women and I think like training them on that should it's not an anti-man thing to say that's something that you should appreciate yeah yeah so I don't think that's yeah I don't I agree with that so I don't think that's a problem I don't um, know I guess I, I guess I've been going so down the rabbit hole of um like people the 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 anti SJWs anti woke people that I consider that to be such a woke position maybe I need to expose myself more to wokey people I mean, yeah, I mean, I've seen, I, I've, there's so many examples of men not knowing how to, <laughs> you know, I've seen so many awkward, I mean, this is, this is not, this is just teaching people how to stop being assholes, so I don't think that's a, that's a work position, yeah. Um, maybe By the my way, most, I, found, I, sent, I sent you the, real quick, I sent you the clip in which Dave Rubin claims oh. that only religion can save society, oh, he secularism, sent it to me? yeah, he I says, need- uh, on Twitter, I sent it to you. Do you want me to send it to you on Facebook? It's fine. I'll find it. Yeah, okay. okay. okay I'll... But the scientists, uh, yeah. philosophers, and atheists have destroyed every liberal institution. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review that on Atheist Republic. Um, I, okay, my most woke position, again, this shouldn't even be considered woke. We're saying woke as if they're wrong. They're not woke mm. because we're right, okay? Woke is wrong. <laughs> but... I think what most people would think is a work position is that people saying like, oh, get over slavery, get over Jim Crow that was in the past. I think that's stupid. How could you get over that when generational poverty is this thing? How wealth mobility hasn't been achieved 100% anywhere. Obviously, the effects of this, obviously the black community is experiencing the you know the you know everything from jim crow and slavery they're still experiencing that today like the the correlation between your wealth today and your wealth of your parents and your parents parents is very very high and people coming up with anecdotes of people coming off of poor backgrounds and now being wealthy as if that proves that this is not there's not a correlation there is moronic to me like oh look i was poor right. and now i'm rich I, I was black i didn't i didn't let it hold me back I'm like mm-hmm. okay great congratulations you're on anecdotal ex- evidence there's shit ton of data that shows that there's a major correlation the number one factor that sh- pr- shows that whether you're not going to be wealthy or not is the wealth of your parents Right. So, and this this generational poverty does not get eliminated in one generation, two generations, three generations. It keep it continues for a while, and we're not at, at all that far away from slavery and Jim Crow and all the other policies that mm-hmm. kept black people down. We're not at all far away enough for that for all the effects of that for it to disappear. We're not, you know. So, yeah, no. Don't get over slavery. I think what you should say is like, 
the the woke cult has taken has taken that so far to a crazy level by saying like intergenerational trauma instead of intergenerational poverty like oh i i feel the whip of the slaver on my back or like you know like you you guys raped us like you know this and that like oh you people need to apologize like that level of ridiculousness shouldn't make you think that the effects of slavery like people when they want to when people want to adjust for the woke they go they over adjust they go and say like oh get over slavery like that was like hundreds of years ago and it shouldn't matter today that's an over adjustment of the craziness that is coming out of work no the effect of slavery is still being is still holding people black people down today so that hasn't been erased right that's what uh Kyle Kalinske basically said where Racism is not an interpersonal problem. It's a systemic problem. And so reading things like white fragility or me and white supremacy and thinking that every white person is inherently racist is just a waste of time because what we need to be focusing on is the fact uh, it are things like incarceration rates or socioeconomic problems. Though These are the systemic things that we need to be focusing on, not wasting our time with interpersonal racism. I mean, I don't agree with that. I think interpersonal racism is still a major problem. And that and that sh- fixing that should be prioritized. I think explicit racism is worse than all this implicit racism and racism by outcome. I mean, the fact that we managed to f- remo- reduce a lot of that should be si- a sign of great progress. Like as mm-hmm. much as bad as it is for having a judge that is making decisions that he unintentionally leads into racist um, outcome, as bad as that might be, or, I mean, I have to, like, again, I think it is. A lot of people disagree with me on what whether systemic racism is a thing or not. I think it is. As, and as bad as that is, it's by far, by far better than a judge that is explicitly intentionally racist, right? Yeah. Right? So, but and the, that is, I mean, and we have reduced that explicit racism by huge margin in the in the united states has in the past couple of decades and that's 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 something that should be celebrated people act like oh if you have systemic racism that's just as bad as having explicit racism it's not mm-hmm. yeah what are you going to say sorry yeah I, I was going to say that i i really don't think the interpersonal racism one is too big of a problem when we look at the fact that hate crimes have gone significantly down uh, the only uptick in hate crimes that occurred was against Jewish people, I think, in like 2015 or 16 or something like that. Wait, the amount wait, of traffic. Wait, you're saying it's not a, it's not bad because it's gone? No, well, I'm saying it's getting better to the point where the what we need to be more focused on the systemic aspect of it rather than the interpersonal one. Right, right. I mean, I agree with that, but let's acknowledge the fact that if it was here, it would have been worse. Like, like it, it's the difference between saying. You know, oh, I don't think the plague matters. But, you know, is it, why? Because it's not a bad, it's, you don't care, like, because it's not a harmful thing? No, you mean because it's not an issue right now. Not because it's not harmful, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's a, we're making two different statements. I think we agree. Um, I think explicit racism is worse than, imp, you know, implicit racism or racism by outcome. But we have less of it now, so we get to focus on other things. Mm-hmm. But we have to acknowledge that if it was as, you know, on a one-on-one basis, explicit racism is by far worse than implicit racism. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we have to be acknowledge the progress that we have made when it comes to removing that. Right. Yeah. yeah. My My concern is that there's a narrative going around that there is... A bunch of these racist, like hardcore racist people who are coming out of the forest and just lynching black people. And I don't like I don't think that the level of explicit racism is anywhere near as bad as what they're claiming it is. to Yeah, be. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. And so that's why I would say, even though it is still a problem and we should still address it, we really need to be mainly focused on the systemic aspect of it. I agree. OK. I agree. I agree. Um, the, but I had this Adrian guy disagreeing with me on systemic racism. I don't know. Um, Not like it doesn't exist. 
he think yeah he was he and he has been he's a black guy that has been mm-hmm. a major target of the most vile anti-black racism anybody has experienced right like guns people shooting at him oh, like shit. yeah like watch that episode on Aces Republic it was crazy uh, and this guy who had, had people calling him the N word all his life, people beating him up because he's black, uh, moving him around, you know, like he's just like a cattle, like it's like it's horrible, right? And this guy, he was arguing with me that he thinks systemic racism is not a thing. Um, so it was a very interesting experience. So if you get a chance, I mean, the problem is that it's three hours, so it's a huge time commitment. But if oh. you watch it, let me know. I'll watch it at two times speed. Yeah. Is it Was he like giving the Larry Elder arguments? No, he, this guy is very unique. I really like talking to him, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to spoil it. Watch it and let me know what you think. I'll watch it. Um, I'll probably have it on the background because uh, I've got an exam on Wednesday that I'm Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just do sort of af- listening. To the we'll do it background. after the exam. Af- no, you, yeah, you could do it after the exam. You know, it's not urgent. You're not gonna get mad at me. <laughs> no. All right, man. This is good. So I'm gonna stop it here now. Okay. Okay. Stop.